Shortest word, code was challenge, let's get started. Simple, given a string of words, return the length of the shortest words. So let's have a look at the sample test. We have this three, which says that this is gonna be the shortest length of the word inside this string. So we have Bitcoin take over the world, etc, etc. And three means that the shortest word inside this sentence is going to be three. And we can see we have the word the, which has only three letters, which is why we have three here. And for this one, we have two, and we can clearly see visually that it's going to be we. So let's see how we're going to do this in theory. So we're going to take the string and use the split function on the spaces, and then we'll have an array of strings. Then array of strings is going to be each of the words I'm currently highlighting. We take them words and loop through them and figure out the lowest value. So let's get started. We can have a string array and we can call it words. And then we have a parameter called s, which is what this sentence gets passed into. As you can see here, kata.findShort bracket. And then we have one parameter, which will just be this s variable. So we can use s.split because that's how the function works. And then we open the brackets and we put a single quote in there followed by a space. So we're telling this we want to split by the space and it return us back a string array, which will be all of these separate words. And then now we need to get a variable set up called the lowest. And then we're going to return that right at the end. So we've got our basic structure going. So now we need to write our for each loop so we can loop through all of the different words inside the words variable. So we can say a string word in words, and then let's open the curly braces after. Now, because this is going to be zero by default, like this, we can't have this as zero to begin with because then all of these words is going to be bigger than zero, which is going to be an issue. So it says here, the string will never be empty and you don't need to account for different data types, which means what we can do is we can set this to word square bracket zero, and this will let us access the first position inside the array, which is called words. And then using the dot length operator, we can actually just grab the length of the first word and place it inside lowest. So in the case of this one, it's going to return this sentence inside our words variable, and then each of the words is going to have a separate position. Then we can take the first position, which is going to be Bitcoin in this case, and then take the length of it, and then we can initialize it to the length of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is going to be six, so we can take that six and place it in lowest. So we start off with six, which will be the length of the first word. And then after that, we can take every single word going forward and then compare it to this one. And if it happens to be smaller, then we keep track of it. So this is how it's going to work. It's going to be six, then here it's going to be four, then four, then three, and then it won't override the three because this five is going to be more than the three. And then it'll go through the rest of it and it'll set it back to three when we hit who. And then by the end of it, we should have three inside here. And then we can return that inside the function and therefore passing the test. So inside the body, we can say if, then the string parameter word, because that's our local parameter inside our for each, we can say word dot length is less than lowest. If it's less than lowest, that means the six that we begin with is going to be less than the value we're trying to look at. In the case of the second one, this is going to be is four less than six, because we're comparing this one with the lowest variable. So four is less than this one, so then it's going to store four inside lowest. And the way we do that is simply open the brackets after the if statement, and we can say lowest is equal to the word dot the length. And now that that's running, let's have a test. Perfect, that seems to work. And this won't run all of the tests, so we have to press attempt. Once we press attempt, it adds in all of these other tests just to make sure it still works. These random tests don't get included when you just press test. And sometimes there'll be cases where your solution might not be good enough to finish all the random tests, but it will be for the basic test. So it's always good to press apply just to make sure your solution works for all the additional tests. The simple test button will just cover these three. And if these three work, then you press attempt and it'll cover all of the other ones. So let's just have a really quick recap. So let's take this line by line. We make a string array called words and we split up the original sentence by a space. And in this case, it's going to be a space because we can clearly identify here this is just a sentence. These could be comma delimited list and have commas in here instead of spaces, but in this case, we just have a space. So we put in single quotes and we say we want a character that is just a simple space. And then we can't initialize lowest to zero because zero will always ever be the lowest and this if statement won't work. If we say word.length is less than the lowest and lowest is zero, then six, four, four, and three will always return false and therefore this line will never run. So what we can do here is we can say word zero dot length and it'll place the length of the first word inside our lowest just to initialize the variable. So in Bitcoin's case, it'll be six and this one will be four and this one will be five. 
And once we've got our int lowest initialized, then we use our for loop and we go through all of the words inside the words and then check each one one by one. If the word that we're currently up to is less than what we've got on record, then we assign it. If not, we just completely ignore it. And therefore we don't need an else to this because there's nothing else that we need to do inside this else. If it's not lower, then we simply don't care and we move on to the next position. After the for loop's finished, we simply just return lowest from the function and that should be all we need to do. Hope that made sense. If you have any questions, please drop them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I have a C Sharp Masterclass Udemy course coming up soon. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and join the Discord server for exclusive discounts and promotions.